Uh, excuse me as we work on our periscope over here. Uh, tonight is uh, country and week number 180 of our 193 week around the world learn to cook challenge as we travel around the world and learn to cook by doing a different country in alphabetical order every week and uh, I am attempting over your shoulder trying to simulcast on a Periscope on a very old iPad at the moment. Uh, so tonight we are doing a uh, taro with seafood. Uh, thank you Kim for the uh, restream. Uh, Ellie, uh, thank you. Hello, I'm uh, okay. Thank you for liking the restream. Uh, hey Kenneth, I see you there. And is this finally working? Okay, so Periscope people. Uh, just so you can get in on the game too. This is uh, what we're doing. We're cooking the food of Tuvalu. Tuvalu is located, the Pacific Island nation, located about halfway between Australia and Hawaii. And uh, the Periscope people, uh, where we'll be simulcasting, we'll be getting the bird's eye view. Uh, give it a second while I place them. You just enjoy that for a moment. Whoa, there we go. Hmm. Somehow this seems to be funky. Let me flip this around. You can see me. Hey there. Okay. Let me get my lens on here for you. It's weird trying to do two things at once. So bear with me while I get my Periscope world right side up. It seems to be sideways. Okay. You're this way. Now you're going to be this way. Okay. And you're going to be looking from on high there. Whoa. Hello. Okay. So the bird's eye view from Periscope, the cockeyed view uh, for the meerkat people. Hello, Kenneth. Thank you for liking the restream. It is very warm here. I just came back from running eight miles out into the blazing sun. I would have done ten, but I thought I was going to die. Ah, so I'm in a rush. Uh, uh, Emily, hello. Uh, how are you doing? Greetings. Uh, okay, so once more, this is the world. This is Australia. This is Hawaii. And Tuvalu is located right about there, just south of the equator, um, sort of east of Papua New Guinea, uh, north, uh, like straight north from New Zealand. So it's right about there. That would be right about there on your map if you're watching. Hello, Derek. I see you up there. Uh, Periscope people, I've only, uh, I, I finally allowed everyone to comment, uh, but I apologize that people won't, if I won't be seeing your comments, uh, because, um, I won't be spending a whole lot of time looking up over my head, uh, to see them, and in Periscope they fly away, which is kind of how that works. So, there's not a lot to do, um, and there's not a whole lot of recipes for Tuvalu. We'll get into the details about the country in a moment. Uh, we've done a number of Pacific Island nations. This is our second to last one. It was nice today, so I get to wear a tank top. Yay! Well, uh, I'll talk to you about my bizarre week uh, weekend uh, as we go. Uh, but we'll get into that later. I see you, Derek, there. Okay, is this working? Is there enough of you, of you here on top? Okay, good. So, we are going to be cooking with taro. T-A-R-O, taro. It is a root vegetable. Uh, thus, we've gotten about, you know, half of a, half of one of these roots. Um, this will be serving two people. Uh, taro root is sort of like a yucca, sort of like a malanga. Um, the top part, uh, the, uh, the leaves, we'll see those in a minute. Uh, sometimes called elephant ear, um, also called dasheen. Uh, depend, there are different varieties. The ones that you find in the wild can be toxic if not cooked. So it should never be eaten raw. And the, um, that reminds me. Oh, I did that already. Uh, the, be, 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 the type that you tend to buy in stores in uh, America, at least, have been, uh, the, the toxicity is, uh, in large part, has been bred out of them. That looks like a small tree stump. Yeah, it's a root. It's just imagine, you know, pulling up a thing and the root is there. Um, sort of like a potato, the same kind of concept. Uh, but yes, uh, like yucca, 
uh, would be toxic if not cooked. And apparently the same goes for the leaves um, and the, the different varieties and so forth too. Uh, but that tends to be an issue. Uh, can I get you a little better view there? Okay. The So we got to clean this sucker. So I'm going to be right back. I'm going to clean it, got to peel it, and then we got to boil it until it's soft. It's a starch, so it's quite filling, which is good. It's, uh, now the thing about uh, Tuvalu specifically, uh, almost ironically, is that uh, t uh, specifically taro isn't normally what they have. They have a, a variety that's very close to taro, but not the exact same plant. And uh, that plant is called um, nom potato, yes. Uh, that plant is called, I'm going to get it wrong, I know I'm going to get it wrong. It's not paluca, it's pulaka, I think it is. Um, it's called a swamp root in that it grows, you know, in the swamp, uh, there'll be these sort of pits and in basically a swamp and the big elephant ear plant is on top and then they pull it up. I can see the blender or the tablet or just the end of the board on Periscope. Yeah, um, I can't get you too far. I, I tried to get a mount for the fridge. Uh, problem with that though was that um, uh, that didn't work out too well because, ah, see, that's kind of what happens. And I gotta go. I tried to fix it and now I made it worse. Hold that thought. Wow. Sorry. Rah. Gotta make sure you're firm. Because you're gonna be getting the real bird's eye view later. Mm. Okay. Rah. Stay. Be good. Okay. And we're back. By the way. Uh, I, uh, so, we're gonna peel the sucker. I'm gonna put some uh, water uh, in a bowl, a bigger bowl of water, because they will oxidize like a potato will. But then we're going to boil it until it's soft. Much better. Thank you, Derek. Alrighty. And the root is rough, and it's kind of spongy. So we've worked with a variety of these different roots, uh, Malanga, uh, which I'm more used to being Puerto Rican. Uh, we call it yautia. Uh, I believe we cooked uh, malanga patties uh, for Palau, if you want to check that all out. Again, everything is at clickyland.com. Uh, you can find the links to the original, res original recipes, pictures, information about the countries, links to these videos, and catch up on the countries that you missed uh, at clickyland.com. Uh, but for Palau, we did uh, malanga uh, fritters or, you know, patties, which came out really, really well. Um, yuca, you may be familiar with. Uh, yuca is used a, a lot in Latin America. And yuca is not yucca. So yuca is Y-U-C-A, yucca is Y-U-C-C-A. Like the Beast of Yucca Flats, if anyone knows that old B science, science fiction movies from the 50s. Hmm. Is your husband home? Oh yeah, he's home, he's upstairs. Yes, today is a Sunday. Uh, the deal is that I've had a whirlwind weekend. So Friday, we got on a plane late and went from here in South Florida, uh, had to drive to Fort Lauderdale, which is like an hour. And we flew to Columbus, Ohio, where we used to live, because uh, some friends of ours are getting married after 28 years together, they could finally get married. Um, so we flew to Columbus. Here we were left and I had run the day before and it felt like 94 degrees. And when we got there it was 29 degrees. And snowing. And the, we woke up in the morning and it was snowing and walking around and it was snowing. And it was crazy. And then yesterday afternoon you know, we headed back to the airport and we got back home at 1 a.m. in the morning. Today I went running and it, you know, feels like 87. So my head is just turned around a hundred different ways. Hi, Paul. Hi. Hi, hi. How are you? Uh, Saman. 
Greetings, hello, salam. Uh, but there we go. Uh, so now we've peeled this. Now we need to uh, cube this. Uh, Paul, hey there. I see you in the Twitter. Uh, obviously you still have your situation. Uh, good luck on that. What am I doing? I am, I need, I did not pull my hand yet. Okay. Uh, poor Cliffy. Yeah. Well, this heat is just, it's crazy because I'm freezing cold. I mean, this time yesterday I was standing, you know, right next to my old apartment, freezing to death, you know, with the snow blazing down on me, and now this. So, go figure. So, again, it's very important that you not ever eat this raw, and the skin can um, give you also uh, itchy effects. Uh, because of the uh, toxins in it. So uh, be uh, a little bit careful with that. Uh, if you're, if you see, sounds like Freddy Krueger, yeah. Uh, oh boy. So it's, yeah, it's been crazy. I bought new shoes, new running shoes. Hopefully it'll make my painful running situation, a little less painful. And I have a, a mar half marathon I'm doing a week from today. So, excitement abounds. So, um, trying to get cubes that are more or less the same size, more or less being the optimal phrase here. And, Then we're going to boil these until they're soft. There are not a, not a whole lot of recipes about Tuvalu. So cruel. What's cruel? So cruel. Firelight. What's cruel? Killing the Portero? Uh, sorry, watch a horror movie earlier. That's okay. You're allowed. Uh, so, uh, again, trying to cube the tarot. Uh, there are not a whole lot of recipes for Tuvalu. Tuvalu is a very, very small nation. It's one of the, uh, it's like, what, the third smallest UN member state? Vegetable abuse. Ha 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 ha. Um, the, uh, they are a series of atolls and a couple actual islands. Um, most people live in the capital of Funafuti. But the entire country has about 10,000 people. So that's a very, very small population. They're out, uh, they don't get a whole lot of tourism in people uh, with Freddy Krueger in it. Rawr. Yeah, and um, Johnny Depp, right? Yeah, 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 that was him, Johnny Depp, and that was his first movie. I didn't see that until just a few years ago. Uh, Blue Ball Mountain coffee in my cup tonight. Who says this? Kenneth. Ah, you know what? Speaking of coffee, when we were in Columbus yesterday, uh, we stopped by this uh, coffee shop we used to go to all the time called Stoffs. Stoffs, 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 right there. Um, they have the greatest coffee anywhere. They have this thing called Highlander Grog. Uh, you know, cheers, Derek. Uh, Highlander Grog, it is the best stuff. And I can't get, we can't get it here. So we had to make the pilgrimage to the uh, coffee shop in Columbus to buy theirs because it is the best coffee ever. Well, just about. There's a couple of things that I think have tied. The Puerto Rican coffee, not that I'm, you know, unbiased, but uh, oddly enough, they're in when you go to the Starbucks in Puerto Rico, and only the Starbucks in Puerto Rico, um... No, the Starbucks anywhere else. They spell the, the Puerto Rican coffee beans. And those are surprisingly really good. They should sell them everywhere. Tura, Lura, Lura. Ha, 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 ha. But I'm not sure. I think so. Yeah, 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 it was. I just saw it not too long ago. I think he's like the first person who gets killed or something like that. Uh, but that was uh, the, the, the... Freddy Krueger. That's the Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, because I saw, I had never seen it, because I couldn't, I was too chicken to see it when it first came out. I absolutely like caramel coffee. Cool. Uh, okay, so we've got our, uh, taro here, 
and we're going to put that in a pot to boil it. So let's get a, a pot that's not that big. Uh, how's about you? I need a medium sized pot. Uh, for you. Hello! Oh, thank you! Thank you, Vicky! Uh, I'm not gonna move you to the stove. Thank you for the, for the hearts. Um, I'm not gonna move the Periscope people to the stove just yet, or you, because I'm just gonna boil this and then gonna come right back here. So, you'll be able to see all the way across the room. We'll, we'll move you when, when the time comes. Okay. So, into the water, and we're gonna boil you. And that's gonna be for about 20 minutes. Thank you for the heart. Um, so, uh, while we do that, we're going to prep the couple other things. I wish I could show a picture of Freddy Krueger, but spare me a nightmare, I won't. Yeah, no, that's okay. I couldn't bear to see uh, uh, horror movies in general, or that one in specific when it came out. And people told me it was really good, and I said, ah. And I said, I'll have to wait till it's about, you know, 20, 30 years old before I can see it. You know, I said, when it's like old, when it looks old and creaky and, you know, and fake, then I'll watch it. And that's basically what I did. I waited like 25 years and I said, okay, now I can see it. Uh, the Bolognese coffee is the best I have yet tasted. Hmm, good to know. Okay, so uh, let me clean this off and then we're going to uh, peel and chop our onion. And we'll talk about Tuvalu. Tuvalu, Tuvalu, oh, that's where the Tuvalu came in. Okay. We are listening to the music of Tuvalu. Interesting little country. And you probably have interaction with Tuvalu every day. And you don't even know it. Can any of you guess why? Uh, hello, Billiards Guy. Thank you for joining. We are cooking the food of Tuvalu in our 193 week around the world learn to cook country a week challenge. Hey, Vicky's in the house, his house. How are you? Uh, okay, so uh, we're going to chop an onion. We're going to chop an onion. We're going to chop an onion. Chop an onion. Uh, there is not a whole lot to this. There's not a whole lot to the traditional food. There's a lot of fish. Uh, there's a lot of coconut. And uh, coconut milk is where people would traditionally get their fresh water uh, because there isn't a whole, uh, whole lot of sources of uh, fresh water there. Uh, in fact, they're right now having um, kind of a fresh water crisis because their water has to be imported and uh, they think they might run out, like, like super soon, if somebody doesn't send some right now. Which is a sad situation. Also, um, some of the, uh, uh, the atolls, at least, will be, you know, likely completely underwater in a few years. Uh, although, unlike some of their island neighbors, uh, they're not um, all ready and packed to move entirely to another country. Um, whereas the uh, people of uh, Kiribati, uh, which is uh, spelled Kiribati, K-I-R-I-B-A-T-I. -I -I. It's pronounced Kiribati. It's spelled uh, Kiribati. Um, and uh, so those two groups of islands, atolls, are connected. People, uh, they don't know exactly for sure when people first arrived, but uh, this is our first recorded instance of people in uh, what is the uh, islands of Tuvalu, uh, arrived about a thousand years ago. Uh, I have dip onion in water before cutting, less fumes. Uh, yeah, I'm, I tend to be okay with it. Um, people think it's weird, but I am. Uh, never heard of Tuvalu. Yes, actually, they've made a number of movies. A number. Of, they had about ten different documentaries about Tuvalu. I like to scare my brother after the movie. Yes, um, but anyway, uh, so people arrived and uh, probably from different places in Polynesia, and uh, they were doing fine. Uh, Europeans started arriving, or you know, visiting, shall we say, in the 1500s, uh, but they didn't stick around because there were no natural ports. 
So they didn't really have an interest in colonizing or doing anything with it. There wasn't a lot of fertile land for them to have, uh, you know, plantations or anything. So they were more or less left alone for the most of its history. Um, until which point the British uh, claimed it as a protectorate and eventually a colony. And uh, they, so their group of islands uh, were known as the Ellis, not Ellis Island, E-L-L-I-S, like Ellis Island in the United States where all the immigrants came in the turn of the last century, but rather Ellis, E-L-L-I-C-E uh, islands, and that's what is Tuvalu. So the other islands to the north of it were called the Gilbert Islands by the British, and so it was the Gilbert and Ellis Islands, and they were run as a colony uh, by the British until... Uh, then World War II happened, and the Japanese uh, claimed the most of what is was then the Gilbert Islands is now Kir Kiribati, and the uh, what is uh, Tuvalu. The Allied forces said, "Listen, we're going to need this for an air air force base and to fight things off. You're going to want to, you know, hide if you want to be safe." And so they moved. What did we do? Yes, uh, so the uh, people of now Tuvalu were sort of moved to the smaller islands for their own protection. And this, uh, what is, was the uh, Allied naval base is now, or basically runway, is now the airport uh, in the capital of Funafuti. And just like some of these other small island nations, not a lot of planes come in. Uh, you know, a plane may come in like, you know, maybe once or twice a week tops. And so the runway becomes a hangout spot. So people exercise on the runway, they hang out on the runway, they have picnics on the runway. Because there's issues with uh, obesity and diabetes, which is endemic now in the Polynesian nations because uh, the people of the uh, island nations have kind of stopped eating their traditional food. Uh, fish and you know the uh, root vegetables and such and uh, Cliffy you have something in the corner of your left nose part on. okay I'll be right back Great piece of tissue. Sorry for grossing everyone out. Meanwhile, thank you, Emily. Um, the uh, so when since most of the stuff needs to be imported, the uh, food in these Pacific Island nations tends to be canned, you know, meats. You've heard of spam being very popular, and uh, American fast food and such uh, tends to be what's eaten, and the Americans and New Zealanders uh, have been sending sort of lesser cuts of lamb, uh, the, you know, the, haw, the, the saggy part in the middle, the very fatty, fatty part of lamb, to these island nations, and they've been eating it, and all that's been contributing. Uh, okay, well, thank you, Emily. Um, I appreciate your help. The, uh, but it's been leading to uh, outrageous things with obesity and thank you and uh, big problems with that there and so there's all these efforts to get people to eat healthier and such and you're gonna see since this is a traditional meal uh, there is a whole lot of fat in this from the coconut cream which is sort of like the extra fatty um, um, spam and bully beef are huge yes indeed they are uh, corned beef. There's a thing that uh, we did for Samoa, and I tried it the first time when before Meerkat when I cooked Fiji, which is called uh, I hope I don't get the pronunciation wrong palusami, uh, which is in essence uh, you get uh, onions and corned beef, and then uh, wrap it in the taro leaves or spinach if you can't get taro leaves. And uh, and then you kind of boil it and steam it, and it's just you know cooked in the coconut fat, and uh, it's very good. But I can't do it for every island nation. I did it, I, I I made a disaster of it when I cooked Fiji the first time because I couldn't find fresh taro leaves, and uh, so I was just learning then. And then in some, for Samoa, I did a variation, uh, a dish that does some of the same kind of stuff, 
and uh, that came out rather well, and that was the first time I, I got fresh taro leaves. We got fresh taro leaves today, and they're going to be used in this dish, but again, beware. Uh, fresh taro leaves. Uh, is your thumb okay since you cut it last time? Yes, it's fine. It's healed now. Thank you. I thank you. Thank, thanks for asking. Oh, it's healed up. Uh, beep, beep, beep. So that's palusami. So that's a standard thing. A number of uh, sort of uh, fish cooked in citrus dishes, you know, uh, a la ceviche, uh, or raw fish that's barely cooked in in um, in citrus juices, which we've done both a couple times now. So it's very difficult to keep finding new stuff. Uh, also, uh, sweet potatoes are very big. But any, no one has guessed, no one has yet guessed why you people on the internet, that means you too, um, could potentially be interacting with the nation of Tuvalu on a daily basis. I'll give you a hint. It's the way that the country that doesn't have a lot of resources makes most of its money. And you're not buying anything from them. Well, you're not you're not spending any money for it anyway. But they're getting a lot of money for it. So that's your trivia question. I've got something on the lens. I don't know what's happening. I don't know if it's a light. Maybe it's a light. Anyway, uh, there's our onion. So now we're gonna peel and chop uh, the taro leaves. This is what I was talking about. The the leaves from the taro plant, which are boiling. Uh, the air, well, the, you breathe the same air, certainly. Cliffy Land? What about Cliffy Land? Uh, since I am new to your stream, how long have you been in this area of specialty? Uh, okay, so here's the story. Uh, I started out never learning to cook. Uh, exactly! Kenneth got it, the .tv do domain. Since every country has a domain name, uh, a dot .u, dot, uh, you know, dot .ca for Canada, etc., you get theirs happen to be TV. And when they said, hey, now people can use these other domains and sell them for other purposes, like, you know, shortening services, uh, like T.O. Togo sold theirs. So when you twi click on something on Twitter, it's, you know, T.O. at the end. So Togo gets some money for that. Something with the dot .tv at the end, the people of Tuvalu get some money for that. So they get millions of dollars every year for people having the dot .tv domain. So you guessed it. Back to my story. Okay, I never learned to cook. Uh, about 30 years ago, I accidentally almost killed myself uh, because I didn't know how to cook. And then I stayed away from the kitchen for about 30 years after a lot of different stuff. I basically decided I need to do something about this. I cooked a dish from Afghanistan, decided uh, that was good. I wanted to do a food from a different country in alphabetical order every week to learn how to cook. And here we are 180 weeks later, uh, near the end of our four year journey, uh, having cooked this many countries. And I hope that answered your question. And now we're streaming on uh, Meerkat and on Periscope. And everything is at Cliffy Land. And you can find us on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, on Pinterest, and now on YouTube. Back to the show. So, taro leaves are not easy to f f find. I just thought I had another leftover root. Yay for Kenneth! Yay! So this is a bag. I had to had to send the husband to the global market of a million items where no one knows where anything is. And he came back. They this time they had the uh, taro leaves when we cooked. Uh, was it Tonga? They didn't have it. So yes, and uh, and there's a book coming. We're we're working on a book. Uh, with a, a special certain person, and we're gonna see how that happens. The, the, the goal is to have it out by Christmas. I have my doubts, but you know. I'm willing to trust and believe. This is taro. Taro leaves look like that. Uh, you'll find them a lot in ornamentation, in landscaping. They're also called elephant ears, also called dashin, and they look like that. See, it looks like a big old elephant's ear. It's a little cracked, but that's what it looks like there. Elephants here. Or like a big bat. And um, it was Tonga, I think. Indeed, it was. I, I was. I wanted it. I couldn't find it. I had to substitute spinach. 
So uh, there's no way I'm going to need or use uh, all of this, which is kind of a shame. Thankfully, it was not expensive. Uh, however, uh, as it turns out, you don't want to eat it um, raw because you'll have an allergic reaction. It is ker hum. You lost me there, Kenneth. Um, uh, I'm basically only need one cup of the, this case of the chopped leaves. You're so pretty. Thank you. Um, I need to figure this out. Uh, since I, I, you know, I had this idea because I, I ate this, I, I accidentally, I ate the dried reconstitute, I meant creative, OMG. Oh, ha <laughs> Anyway, um, I meant to uh, use the, the fresh ones when I cooked Fiji, I couldn't find them. Uh, I wound up using dried ones and it was an utter disaster because I tried to sort of, I thought, hey, if I soak them, I can reconstitute them. It doesn't work that way. Fly, fly. And um, so that was a problem. Uh, but then when I did get fresh ones and I made the Samoan dish with it, is your special person Ken Hum? Uh, yeah, let's not talk about him. Um, and the uh, Samoa, it worked out well. It had a very strong taste. Um, strong, like very fibrous. I didn't get an allergic reaction or anything. Don't feel bad, Emily. Um, and uh, but I'm gonna wash this. And, but I looked up now, I was like, oh, maybe I could serve this dish on you know, a tarot leaf, because that would be pretty, and I guess if I was just doing it for decorative purposes, that would be fine, but if we're to want to eat the raw leaf, that would be a bad idea. Um, if they say, if you have, if you eat the raw leaf, be sure to have Benadryl handy, uh, because um, you may need it, because uh, you may start itching and having an allergic reaction, which nobody wants. Trisha, hey there, how are you doing? Greetings. Uh, how are you? Okay, this is our tarot leaf, and now I need to cut it and chop it. Uh, now, it said, when I was investigating about the tarot leaf, it said if you want to eat it, you have to be very careful to uh, cook it thoroughly and maybe steam it for something like one and a half to three hours. Well, we don't have that kind of time. This particular recipe said nothing of the sort about that kind of time, which confused me. So I'm, I'm taking the, uh, the core and stem out of this leaf here, uh, which confused me. And then I read more, and it said that if the leaf is cooked in uh, coconut fat, i.e. the coconut cream, that fat helps break down that which gives one the allergic reaction, and then you're okay. So uh, this is going to be chopped and cooked in the, uh, in the coconut cream, the very fatty coconut cream. So, uh, that's the name of that tune. Uh, then make them. Make them? Make time. Oh, then make time. Ha ha ha. Yeah. Abracadabra. Time! Uh, no, I, um, I, I was looking into, you know, what else to do with it and how else I could, you know, just cook it and what else I need to do. Could I just stick it in the steamer and just say, well, now they've been steamed for an hour. Uh, but, mm, I'm just gonna cook the recipe as is. Which is, it's had to chop about a cup. And then towards the end of the cook, to, uh, I chewed on some growing in San Diego as a young man ended up in the hospital. Well there, Kenneth, Ken, oh, that was Derek. No, that was Kenneth. Uh, yeah, well, there you go. Uh, Derek says, I irritating root vegetable poisonous leaves uh, where is the puffer fish? Yes, time is just an illusion. I think that's a song about that. Uh, I am going to chop this uh, taro leaf. I am it's like rolling it onto itself and folding it over, which is uh, sort of like a chiffonade, I guess. I believe that's what that's called. Um, I'm doing this to save time and make uh, the chopping of the uh, leaf easier. Uh, I'm imagining because, you know, I'm chopping it and then cooking it, even though it's for a short time in that coconut oil, it'll be okay. 
the chopping being the key factor here. Uh, trying to find recipes was nearly impossible. Um, because, uh, hey, uh, Tony, is that you? Thank you for the restream. Uh, and uh, somebody else. Larsa, greetings, hello, thank you for the, uh, what is it, like, uh, thank you for the like. And, uh, hi to Periscope. And hello to YouTube in the future. Uh, the Samoans I know use banana leaves instead. Well, see, that's the thing. Banana leaves you can't eat. You just flat out can't eat. I've never known anyone or seen any recipe anywhere that calls for the actual eating of banana leaves. You will use plantain leaves in plenty of dishes to, uh, you, to infuse the dish with the flavor of the banana leaf. You'll wrap things in it and, and there is a dish. Hey Martina, thank you for liking the restream. Uh, you will find a number of dishes, uh, millions of them, from you know any tropical place on earth that will use plantain leaves. And uh, there's one that is sort of what we did for Samoa. It's kind of complicated. But the, uh, the premise of that dish is you would chop the onions. Uh, hey, we are making a taro with seafood. That's the, we don't have a traditional island name that I found for this particular dish. Ah, I'm missing stuff. Uh, oh, not using the leaves as a wrap, I see. Yes, so um, the dish, this other dish, which we kind of did for Samoa in a variation of it, is you would take this taro leaf and then you would put the onions and maybe chop meat in it and then make a cup and then layer and layer and layer of the leaves so you have a whole cup and you fill it with coconut milk and then you wrap another leaf, maybe a breadfruit leaf around it and then wrap a plantain leaf around that and then tie it off and then you steam it in a steamer for uh, like an hour or so and then you take it out. And we kind of did that for Samoa minus the extra leaves and then we ate the leaves. Uh, the taro leaves you could eat. I don't know about breadfruit leaves, I've never known anyone eating that, but plantain leaf is just for the flavor, not for the wrapping. Taro leaf you can eat, but it needs to be cooked, as Kenneth has uh, told us. So we've got uh, more than I need here. Uh, and now um, I only need a cup of this. So. I mean, I mean, my first inclination was to have, I'm gonna wash this out by the way, um, was to have two cups uh, of the leaves, but then I started thinking between one thing and another, you know, probably not the greatest idea. So yeah, that's about what I need. So let's uh, clean this out. We will be right back in a flash with cash. Okay, really not a lot of ingredients. We're going with shrimp. This, uh, the shellfish part of this game is, uh, it just said shellfish or a small fish. You can use whatever you would like. It was very, 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 very vague. And um, basically whatever you would catch that would be small or collect. So that would be snails or you know, um, scallops or you know what have you. We just decided to go with the shrimp. It said the shrimp is easy to find. Uh, we get the locally sourced wild caught shrimp here, uh, as opposed to your frozen, you know, shipped in from Indonesia, farm by slave labor shrimp that you can get frozen places, and I wouldn't want to eat that anymore. Uh, now that I know better. So, uh, there's very little to this, but the, the key, I believe, from experience is going to be the seasoning, which means Clippy is going to have to remember to taste his food. Did you taste your food? Yeah. Okay. One more moment. I need to make sure I've cleaned the bejesus out of that. So we're going to have our protein in the form of the taro which uh, should be more than cooked now. Here's our taro that's been boiling. Hello to you, there's our taro that's been boiling. And we're gonna drain that sucker. Uh, I, for that I need to, well, I'm gonna put that down over here. Get my colander. And 
it should be soft by now. Because they've been there for a while. I'm going to check. I should have checked before, but I'll check now. Let's find out. Soft? Yep, soft. So, yay. Okay, swapping out you. Hot water, hot water in the metal bowl. Ouch, hands. Okie dokie. So we've got our tarot there. Uh, I need to get a new iPad, so that looks better. Uh, but for now, I need to schedule a trip to the Apple Store. Uh, meanwhile, uh, so we've got our onions, we've got our taro leaves, and uh, let's uh, address our shrimp. Oh, shrimp. Joke never gets old. She has been on ice. What does it smell like? Good question. It smells like a starchy vegetable. It smells like a, you know, like a boiled potato. I see Kurdistan in the house. Salam alaikum, Kurdistan. I uh, wonder how many people died learning how to eat uh, pulaka. Yeah, very true. When you think everything in the world that's edible, you know, people went, hmm, wonder if we can eat that. Boom, we died. No, I guess we can't eat that. Make sure you tell everyone you can't. Oh, no, nope, too late. Everything in the world. In fact, one of the issues when um, the Europeans arrived in Africa and they saw the, um, the West Africa specifically, they were eating the yucca and uh, the cassava, AKA yucca. Um, there was, uh, you know, issues, and um, and the general population was being affected by the poison of the uh, of the yucca. These are tail on shrimp, which is okay. We'll just have to take the tails off. Which means I need a bigger bowl. Pulaka, exactly, pulaka. That is the, uh, the kind of, the, the variation of taro that is eaten in Tuvalu. So anyway, um, after World War II, the uh, islanders uh, in what was then the uh, Ellis Islands and the islanders, the, the Gilbert Islands, kind of the, the, the people of the Ellis Islands thought, you know, we're not really like those people in over there. Um, so the British agreed to sort of let them separate and they became independent uh, separately as Kiribati, oh, these have been deveined also, as Kiribati, uh, as, AKA, you know, spelled Kiribati, but pronounced Kiribati, and uh, Tuvalu. Oh, those who are so creepy, I'm not scared of uh, Freddy Krueger, but I am for shrimp, OMG. Yeah, just takes a little getting used to. Um, you actually can say that about anything. Uh, and uh, I know you get more flavor if you cook it with the you know skin on and da da da. But um, I just hate having to to you know grab the the tails off while I'm eating my my dish. So, but they have been deveined. It's important to devein your shrimp. Uh, what wasn't the World War in Holland? No, World War II was, uh, I know you're young, World War II was across the world, that's why it was a world war. The, uh, the, Europe the, um, the Germans allied with the Italians and took on uh, Europe, and they allied themselves with Imperial Japan that took over uh, most of the Pacific, and then, the Amer and then they bombed, uh, the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor, which got the Americans into the act on both sides, and then uh, the Americans fought uh, with the British, uh, fought a bloody uh, war, and the Australians, in the Pacific to try to protect the 
Uh, New Zealand and Australia, their fishing lanes from the Japanese that basically wanted to take everything over, and it was um, a long and bloody and deadly fight where you know millions of people died, and uh, and some of the worst of the fighting was right there in Kiribati. In fact, in Tuvalu and in Kiribati, you can just wander out and see the wrecked, a wrecked Japanese or American uh, planes and stuff just sitting there, and children are playing on them. We still have our hiding spot in our department. Yep, I don't doubt it. I don't doubt it at all. Okay, so this is trash. Wash my hands. If you want to see an excellent movie, I mean, there's an, there are many excellent movies, but uh, about the... Uh, at least, Amer well, American and British movies about the uh, the fight in the Pacific. Um, check out uh, From Here to Eternity uh, and A Bridge on the River Kwai. Exceptional, one of the all-time greatest movies of all time. And uh, you'll thank me later. Kenneth, those shrimp tails can be used in seafood soup stock. Yes, they can. Um, but I never make that. And make stock, so I don't bother. I mean, I, I could if I would, but I don't. So, uh, we're ready? We're ready. We're ready. Ready, ready, ready. So, you stay there for a minute. You, hi. Hi, follow me. Everybody just follow me. Uh, you're going into the sky. I'm going to fly. Fly with me. See what the world looks like from up there. If I can do it without dying. Okay, get my hand on here and Now you're locked in. Okay, and now it's your turn. The bridge movie was amazing. That was one of the best movies ever. Freeze them. See, that's the thing. I have a dozen different things that people have told me, oh, you can make a with that, freeze it. And I have a dozen different things like that sitting in the freezer. Um, so, I'm not. Uh, I'm lazy that way, I'm sorry. And Frank uh, Awesome was so brave, indeed. Indeed, that's like the first thing uh, most kids read about it, because, you know, I assume they read edited versions of it. Um... And of course you're there, so. Uh, the bridge was in Burma. Yes, it was in Burma. Um, that was an astounding movie. I mean, I heard it was good, but it wasn't until I saw it for myself that I said, wow, that really is a, just an outstanding movie. Long, but really good. With, uh, was it David Niven, is it? Yes. Yes. And that's where that little, uh... Yes. And Alec Guinness. And Alec Guinness, yes, better known later for Star Wars. Uh, I read her diary. Yes, um, that's, like I said, usually the first thing that, uh, history-wise, that kids are introduced to uh, in that story. Uh, one, two. Um, uh, Emily, you were asking me the other day why I was freaked out when you told me that you were born in 2001. Um, yesterday afternoon, I was wearing a T-shirt that is quite definitely two years older than you. <laughs> so, if I had been wearing it when you said that, I would say, mm, what I'm wearing is older than you. So, there's that. So, we're going with two tablespoons of butter. You can buy her book, uh, Good Fish Talk Already Made Up. See, that's the thing. Um, I can usually buy, the, the few times I've needed seafood stock, I just buy it and, you know, save myself the trouble. If there were certain things I knew I cooked on the regular, you know, because this whole alphabetical thing, I don't know if this month I'm going to be cooking a lot of European countries, or this time it's in the Oceania, and tomorrow it's in the Middle East, and next week it's in South America. It, it really messes you up in terms of having stuff around and not, because it goes bad and stuff like that. Uh, that was in Amsterdam. I have been in the actual house where she was found. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I, I wish to visit that someday. When I get back to Amsterdam someday. Someday. Well, someday. We don't have, you know, immediate plans to go. So, taro, shrimp, butter. Santos, hey, Santos. 
Brooklyn into his house. I saw you go. I mean, not Brooklyn. You're Bronx. You work in Manhattan, eh? Yes. I saw you gave someone the old Bronx cheer. Y'all gave someone the old Bronx cheer this week. Hola! The reality of the bridge too far is worse than the movie. Yeah, seriously. Seriously. Yeah, after I saw the movie, I went and I looked up. I would always look up the story of the, uh, the true story of what happened. And yeah, it's always just, you know, made more acceptable for television. Santos, yes, indeedy. Yay, yay Bronx, let's just put it that way. You know, the husband went to school in the Bronx. So, D D D D D. Uh, so we're melting our butter, and then we're gonna saute our onion, and then I'm gonna get a half a cup of water ready, and I need to have the brains to remember to take pictures for the blog, because there ain't a whole lot to this dish. Not a whole lot to this dish. Uh, Derek, I see you there. Okay, gotta get my camera already. But like I said, this time yesterday, I was like walking in snow. Two days ago, I was here in the 90 degree heat. Yesterday, I was standing in the middle of a snowstorm. And now, today, I'm like recovering from running in 90 degree heat again. So, my head is twisted. Do you use fish sauce? Yes, I do. Um, uh, I, first time I had to use fish, you need more hands. <laughs> Um, and need more eyes too. Uh, the fish sauce. First time I needed fish sauce, I bought you know the fish sauce uh, you know at the corner store. Next time I needed fish sauce, I needed a very particular Laotian fish sauce when I cook Laos, and I got the specific one, but it was a bottle like that big. And I think I, fi I mean I finally finished it up like a couple countries ago. Um, it wasn't Singapore. Maybe it was a Thailand, perhaps. And uh, so then I moved on back to the fish sauce that I had before. And then the husband just bought me more. So I have two jars of fish sauce I need to work through. Go figure. So uh, we've got our oil here and our butter, rather. And we're going to saute our onion until softened. Oopsie doopsie. Uh, so, uh, I mentioned that we're in Jupiter, Florida here, which uh, most people aren't familiar with. Uh, like I said um, a couple weeks ago, we made the news, you know, for a stupid reason. Um, and then we made the news again more recently for uh, a different kind of stupid reason. Because there was some kid from town here who got arrested for throwing a live alligator through the drive through at a Wendy's. Like, I'll let you process that one. It was not a full-size alligator, but it was an alligator nonetheless. So he's in the news, and everybody is saying, oh, Florida, oh, there you go, Florida. And I'm thinking, oh, great, that's our, that's our town right here. And then just a few days ago, the news comes out that... Uh, the same kid, either before or after that incident, had a YouTube video of himself and five of his friends. He's like, you know, maybe 18, 19, I guess. Um, sitting around with his friends, drinking a beer. And then one of his friends has, you know, the baby alligator. And he's like, and so the guy in question is like, here, have it bite me right there. No, no, right there. And they spend a good four minutes trying to get it to bite him. And he's like, no, oh, come right there. And finally, when it bites him, it won't let go. And he starts freaking out. And they have to use a screwdriver to get it off his arm. And I feel sorry for the alligator. Uh, the very best is the Vietnamese red boat brand. Oh, that's what I got. That's what the husband bought me. Um, I got some so good throughout the other brands I had. He wanted his order snappy. <laughs> there you go with the puns. Um... You know what? I think that's exactly what, uh, Kenneth, I think that's exactly what he done bought. If I'm not mistaken, that sounds... Yes, indeed. There it is right there. The red boat sauce, fish sauce. So we're going to be cooking Vietnam uh, 
before too long, so maybe I, I should follow your suggestion and chuck uh, the other one and just keep this one. Anyway, the kid with the alligator is ordered to stay away from all animals now. While he waits trial on whatever stupid people. It's the sort of thing that makes Florida famous. They say if you took all the nuts and put them on a map of the United States and then like tilted it south and they all land in California, Texas, and Florida, it's like, yeah. There's some truth to that. So we've got buttery onions happening here. I mean, yeah, oh, that reminds me. I need to get out my coconut cream. Uh, I was so busy thinking how I had coconut cream, I didn't think that I was going to have to open the can. So coconut cream, coconut cream, coconut cream is, uh, if you took a coconut and cut it open, you know, all the liquid would come out. I mean, first you'd, you know, chop it to get the, 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 the hairy seed part, and then the uh, water would come out, and that's coconut water, and then the, water, the white fleshy part is the coconut meat, and uh, when you take the meat and the water and mix it all together, you get coconut milk, uh, however, the thickest part, the fattiest part of it, that comes from mostly from the meat, is called coconut cream, and it has a consistency of sour cream. Red Boat is fantastic on a roast beef sandwich. Ooh. Hun. You there? I'm here, what? When's the next time you think you'll be making a roast beef sandwich? Uh, I don't know why. Uh, Kenneth here says that if you use that Red Boat fish sauce on it, it's spectacular. Good to know. So yeah, kids, he tends to make roast beef sandwiches from time to time. For lunch. So uh, we're letting it soften for a few minutes. This dish might, we might, dinner might be early tonight. Okay. Be, be advised. A viewer advisory has been put in place for Cliffy Land. Tonight's Tuvaluan dinner may be early. So after this, uh, I need to open this darn can. Somebody said something. It is also fantastic on pizza. That's good to know. You know, I have so many um, uh, spice blends that I have made uh, for these different dishes that usually they sit in the, um, in the cabinets until the just pure coincidence that a future country uses that same spice blend and I keep telling the husband, it's like, hey, listen, if you're making a pizza or something, just grab one of them and just, you know, sprinkle some on. Uh, it'll be great. So we got some use out of some of the Ethiopian spice mixes out of that. And, uh, you know, I ran past a whole bunch of actual coconuts in the ground during my run today, but I thought, eh, I don't know how kosher that is. Okay, this has probably been there too long now. Now, uh, next, we uh, add it. Are we, are we right? Are we right? Yep. We add our water. And take a picture. We add our water. Water, water, water. Focus. And then we're going to add a cup and a half of this here coconut cream, and I'm not sure how much that is. So the rest is left over. We'll have to save that. I use fish sauce in place of anchovies on pizza. Oh, that's brilliant! And I love anchovies. They're like salty shoelaces. So coconut cream goes in. And you notice it's very thick. And I believe I shook it up. Usually it'd be like more ploppy, like sour cream. So we're gonna blend that all in together. You know, I st in terms of Periscope, I really, I don't know how you get the word out. I mean, I guess you can restream and reshare and some, you know, sort of like the way you would uh, with Periscope. Um, and if you have followers, I guess people see you that way. 
it's just with so many people out there, it's kind of hard to tell. Uh, so we need to bring this up to a boil. Uh, Nimpa, that fish sauce is delicious on a simple boiled egg. Ooh, my goodness. That sounds very interesting. I mean, it's salt. Anything you would use salt in. Oh, speaking of which, um, Tuesday's dish is going to be quite interesting. See, this dish here, I went looking and looking and looking and looking for dishes from Tuvalu, and there was one dish that came up. One dish that one global blogger did, uh, someone from Tuvalu did, and we're doing the like original version of that on Tuesday, which uh, I'm, I mean, this might taste good, but I think that's going to taste great. And um, salty, in this case, soy sauce, is going to be a key ingredient in that. Uh, however, uh, this, uh, the other stuff I found was sort of like um, banana, oh, they, tons of bananas, uh, but banana fritters. So this is coming to a boil. And that was sort of like a, a dessert thing with powdered sugar on stuff. And I really, I don't do dessert, so. Uh, in goes the shrimp. Shrimp go, shrimp, shrimp, shrimp go plop. And uh, then we're gonna let that cook for about five minutes, gently. So I'm gonna turn the heat down to a low simmer. Of course, the shrimp being chilly has probably brought that into temperature a little bit. Hey, Diana, hello! I guess you saw my snaps, right? Um, follow, if you want to follow me on Snapchat, you have to follow me on Twitter first and uh, DM me your, uh, your Snapchat handle and I will follow you back. I did, because uh, I did a whole snap story on my 24-hour uh, adventure from the heat to the snow and back to the heat uh, over the past... 24 hours, 48 hours. So, that was fun. Uh, Kenneth says, soy sauce was a vegetarian replacement for fish sauce for use by Buddhists in their strict vegetarian diet. How very interesting. That makes sense. Okay, so we're waiting about five minutes there. After that, um, it feels really weird not having a side dish or anything. Yes, boo on the snow. I, you know what, I love the snow. Uh, it kind of, I, I love snow, but the thing that kills me and killed me about living in Columbus was that the clouds, they kind of cover the entire city, and then the clouds seem to be so much closer to the ground, so you feel like you're indoors even when you're outdoors, and that's what kills me. The snow, that I'm, that I'm cool with. Uh, Aldo, greetings, hello, thank you for joining us, how are you doing? We are making our dish from the nation of Tuvalu uh, in the Pacific Ocean, just south of the equator, about halfway between Australia and Hawaii. Uh, small, small nation, only about 10,000 people. Uh, a lot of the money they get is from the .tv, you know, internet the domain name that they sell to for other people to use. Uh, and um, also from people sending money from living in other countries, they're called remittances, which is uh, kind of one of the main ways that the developing nations, you know, get by, by having people, you know, leave their homes, go work in other countries and send money back. And uh, it's, it's a better bang for the buck, uh, in, apparently, in terms of uh, financial aid, uh, than, than other forms, because apparently I read for every dollar that uh, someone from, say, Mexico living in the U.S. sends back home, that turns into $1.70 of economic capital happening on that end. So, more trivial information. Kenneth, you can get healthy boy brand mushroom-based soy sauce. You know what? Uh, since I have this hooked up right here, uh, I can't open the, uh, the door, but I think that might be what I bought. Um, when I cooked blah, blah, Singapore, so I think that's what I have, and I think that's what I'm going to use. It is mushroom flavored uh, soy sauce. We are listening to music of Tuvalu, incidentally. So we're waiting another three minutes, gently cooking the shrimp. I have it on a simmer. I use coconut aminos in place of soy sauce. Interesting. Interesting. Coconut. Aminos. I do not know what that is. Oh, 
Okay. But again, it's weird not having a side dish here because the, um, I don't think it really needs it. We've got our protein in the term, in the, in the form of the shrimp. Uh, we have vegetable in the form of the, uh, green taro leaves. We have our starch in our boiled taro, so, and our fat in the form of the, uh, coconut cream. So, there's that. You know, I thought about posting the uh, Periscope video on the uh, on the YouTube also, but then uh, I didn't because uh, the quality of the uh, camera on that iPad is not good, so it wasn't worth it. And right now, I'm seeing the you know the color shifting on the white is not really great. Here's from Thailand, the only brand I have used for years. Interesting. I do not, uh, I you know, in fact, I think that is from Thailand what I bought, because uh, that's probably why I bought it. Because I needed to make a dish that used this particular mushroom soy sauce. Like I said, um, if I could open the thing without having to move everyone, I'll show it to you now. So I'm saving the rest of my coconut cream. I'm sure I'm going to need it on Tuesday. Yep, it's cream, all right. Save, save it for later. Save it for later. I'm so thirsty. But uh, yeah, it's uh, such a challenge. And we have one more Pacific Island nation to cook. So I have zero idea what I'm gonna do. When I was looking for this dish, uh, like I said, I found the dish we're doing Tuesday. Uh, I found this other fritters, banana fritters in, with powdered sugar thing, which I'm not making. And um, a jam, but I'm not making jam for dinner. Uh, jam is what's for dinner. Jam is what's for dinner. And bah. And uh, so then I went hunting uh, for something using the uh, pausaka or whatever, the, uh, the taro their version of taro. And I found this dish, I found a different dish next to it with all these Hawaii and other Polynesian type things. So I said, you know, this is not really a, a you know, way off to suggest that this would be for uh, Tuvalu. So there you have it. Okay, now we're gonna add the chopped taro leaves. So they'll cook in the fat and remove the um, toxins, as it were. And they won't be tough since they've been chopped up. After we do that, we're going to add in the cooked taro. And mix that together and then let this cook gently on simmer for about, uh, I'm gonna say 10 minutes. Uh, Cause I wanna be sure that those leaves are cooked enough. I'm gonna bring this up to a boil and then down to a simmer again. And everything well coated. This serves two. So. It's funny, it smells like scallops. It does, it smells like scallops. And then we're gonna have to be sure to season with salt and pepper. And I'm just because my previous experience with the food of uh, the Oceana the uh, seasoning, salt and pepper, does not seem to be a priority, at least in terms of the recipes or anything that I read. Problem number one. Spices and so forth, lack of them is issue number two. Therefore, uh, I'm not gonna go put a lot of crazy stuff in it that wouldn't normally be in it, uh, but I am doing salt and pepper because it belongs. And uh, for some umami flavor, I'm gonna go ahead and add a little MSG also, because. Uh, I found that it's better when I do. Yes, I added a good deal of pepper, because uh, it needs just, you know, something to, to give it some kick. Uh, when you have the coconut cream, it tastes a lot better with uh, a certain amount of salt in it. I will taste it. 
but I'm going to give it a little time so I don't wind up eating uh, too much of the uh, uncooked taro leaves. Uh, what's in chocolate? What's in chocolate? Uh, cocoa is in chocolate. Um, and other stuff and sugar, because otherwise it's very bitter. Um, I don't, I'm not cooking that, but thank you for your question. Um, Richard. Uh, Derek, if this goes horribly wrong, I want your apron. I inherited your apron. I got three of them. One is stained. I bought the first one from the fine folks. I got all of them the fine folks at the Funky Fairy at meerkattees.com or just look for the Funky Fairy online. Here, Meerkat, Periscope, Snapchat, etc. Wonderful people. Make sure you go to cliffyland.com and check out the blog. Follow on Facebook, on Instagram, on Pinterest, or on YouTube. Uh, and the blog itself is on Tumblr. Uh, Lavender Femchi, hey there, hey there. What's wrong with good old banana behind you? Nothing's wrong with the banana. Banana's great. Uh, we're just not, uh, and, it, and it would go perfectly well with this. Uh, but I'm not, um, I don't think we're using the, the bananas the husband usually has for lunch, so. Breakfast. Bre bre breakfast? Breakfast, okay. Yes. Depends on the process. Dutch, Swedes, etc. Anne-Marie, thank you for the uh, restream. Uh... I miss, oh, oh, you mean the uh, chocolate. Yeah, well, I, I've never made um, chocolate, so I just know, you know. <laughs> uh, from general information. And have you ever seen the video of um, the uh, sort of white guy goes into the cocoa farmers in, I think it was Cote d'Ivoire, and they, you know, spend their day farming the cocoa, and he brought them chocolate, and they had never tasted chocolate. And he said, this is, you know, what everyone in the West uses, that thing that you're spending your life farming for. And it was kind of weird seeing said, this? Oh, okay, that's weird. And so that was their reaction to chocolate. Um, I mean, uh, there was a little, you know, weirdness with it, but it was a, a decent video. Haresh, thank you for the uh, like there. Very much. So we're in the last few minutes here. Dinner is going to be quite early, and I do need to taste. Oh yes, I promised I was gonna add MSG, because it needs a little umami. Salt, you got sweet, sour, uh, was it salty? Sweet, sour, salty, bitter, and umami. Those are your five flavors. And umami, the, the, it just has the name MSG, because they just, you know, instead of saying sodium hydrochloride, it never got a name like salt. But uh, it is sort of like in anything fermented you've ever had, it's in there in mother's milk. We're all kind of trained. Our brains are trained for that, that, that you know, fifth flavor. Uh, oh, I missed somebody. Uh, no, you, Haresh, we got. Uh, Monica, greetings. Hello. Thank you for the like. So yes, I promised I would taste it, and now I need to do that. I need to follow my promise, because I always forget. Well, I've got a lot of crap on this counter. Hold on. Well, I'll clear out some space here for y'all. I don't know what that's doing there. Okay, tasting, happening. Again, if you're on Periscope, you know, Periscope is getting the bird's eye view, which is kind of fun. Okay, let's taste you. See how that shrimp is and everything. Hello, hello, Haresh. Greetings. Nine one one. What's with the nine one one? What say you? Why 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 say you this, Derek? Derek is the only person watching on uh, Periscope right now. Okay, that's a little too hot. I'm trying to get down some. Okay. I want to give it another couple minutes, just in case. Hmm. Hmm. Good. Good. I know someone... 
is going to be having um, running for the cayenne pepper. You see, it tends to do that when things don't have a, a certain amount of speed, heat to them. Okay, I can appreciate it. I always try to eat it in the, uh, in the traditional manner. I'm giving another second or two while I put my knives away behind you. One moment, please. Enjoy the music of the sounds of the people of Tuvalu. Did you know the word luau? I did not know this. The word luau is also the, um, I want to say Hawaiian, uh, word for the taro leaf. I did not know that. Um, I found that out today, or this week anyway. Uh, Ninja Turtles Pizza. Which one are you? Are you Michelangelo? Or are you more of an April O'Neil? Thank you for the follow. Thank you for the like. Thank you for the restream. Clifton, hey, thank you for the restream. This tasted really good, incidentally. I'm going to let it be there for just another minute, but uh, it's going to be time for dinner. We're having an early, early dinner. Who knew? Oh, no. Usually we're having dinner like an hour from now because I'm running late. Something about cooking seafood, it cooks so much faster. It was umami flavor was discovered by Japanese chemist uh, Kikunai, Kikunai Akita in 1913. Yes, it was. Both. Both? Both! Yes, I get it. Um, uh, Clifton! I am very, very thirsty. And ding, 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 time! It is time for dinner. Are we ready over there? Oh, okay. Retaining to a hard to see on landscape. Uh, yeah. Um, is it like in general, or is it the picture quality? Um, if you have uh, more, more on that, I welcome any feedback on that uh, uh, top button. Uh, I'm gonna be replacing the iPad. Uh, before too long. Um, hopefully next week. I understand the need for pepper and I'm also a salt fiend. I was such a salt fiend as a kid that I would suck. I would I would take salt packets and I would eat them. No. Yeah, I stopped. And that didn't last too long. But I said I love salty things. Oh my god. Yeah, I just got an ooh from the peanut gallery back here. Better on meerkat. Ah, okay. See, here I thought the, the landscape would be a, a selling point on the periscope, uh, on the periscope side, since, um, like, maybe if you're watching on an Apple TV, you know, you're seeing it horizontally. And I imagined I would eventually um, be able to uh, taste, taste, uh, to use the, uh, the video, the landscape video, uh, which would look better with a better camera with a newer iPad, which is, you know, again, what I'm getting at there. Um... On the behind you uh, in the future, but uh, I'll be able to use that and put it up on uh, on YouTube. Uh, as it is right now, I'm posting the meerkat, which looks you know half decent. So this is what it looks like right now. Hello. Oh, still watch there. Ah, Creole. Oh, see now that probably doesn't look too bad there. Yeah. If the recipe calls for one. Clove of garlic, ten is better. Uh, that uh, that can be true. Uh, one thing I have found, though, uh, in looking at other people's and, and doing all these countries so far, at this point I've learned a thing or two. If the recipe, call, oh, you just said that, um, is that uh, seeing someone else cooking around the world and they did a dish from uh, some African nation, maybe it was Nigeria or something, and they said, oh, did I decided to add some garlic in there. And everyone from the country just came down on her like a house of bricks. Said, we would never use garlic. Where would you think that da, 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 they're so inauthentic? Who do you think you are? And she says, I'm sorry. And so from now on, it's like, oh, if it's not, you know, possible that the people in this country, you know, eat garlic, I'm not going to add it. Uh, I mean, they could have it, of course. But if it's not, you know, indigenous to this part of the world's cooking, I'm not going to. Um, hey, 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 Yolanda, you came just in time for plating. Just in time. Okay, so we're gonna...
And this is our seafood. Me, 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 me. Hold on, Periscope people moving. Our seafood entero, and I'm gonna take the picture, and then we're gonna serve dinner. And we're having early dinner, imagine that. What I miss, oh, well, you miss everything, actually, but um, it's okay. Normally, I am, uh, you know, only halfway through cooking at this point, but it is time for dinner. This is from uh, Tuvalu in the uh, Pacific Ocean. Uh, look again at the GoPro for your other stream. Yeah, um, as a thought, it would require, like, a purchase that I, uh, an unplanned purchase, uh, but um, it's a thought. Um... I'm thinking of something different that doesn't have to do with that. But okay, here we go. Tuvalu, night one. Here we go. This is our seafood uh, in entero. Seafood entero for Tuvalu. Tuvalu. This uh, rounds out week. Look again. At, oh, you said that. Uh, you're on Periscope? Yes. Uh, I'm right here for the bird's eye view is on Periscope. Just follow uh, Cliffy Land. I'm there too. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Tumblr. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. And on Periscope and on YouTube. So check it out. Uh, that's night one of uh, Tuvalu. Maybe we should donate a GoPro. Hey, start up a collection. Hey, Yolanda. Um, and there's no delay on Periscope like there is on here. Um, but tune in Tuesday. Tuesday night, we're doing a little more interesting dish. Again, seafood, but it's gonna have some more elements and some more stuff, and it should be. And I'm gonna do my special favorite thing that I love doing with rice uh, for this part of the world. And uh, I've done it before, I'm gonna do it again. It's very uh, typical of the region, and uh, I happen to live somewhere where I can do that. So check that out, Tuesday night. Night two of Tuvalu. Then on Wednesday, the blog will be posted at cliffylam.com. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Tumblr, uh, Periscope. Oh, thank you so much, Yolanda. Uh, so I'm going to be rounding out the... Uh, you're welcome. Uh, thank you for joining our ending here on Periscope, but uh, be sure to catch the, uh, the blog or the uh, restream. So thank you, Periscope people. Bye. And thank you, meerkat people. You're the greatest. Catch you next time. Till then, gotta eat. Bye-bye.